There we go. Just refreshed it. Hello, everyone. Sorry we were a few seconds late. It wasn't letting me go live, so you got to love technology. Um, so uh, happy Thursday, Laura. Do you kind of want to? I would yeah. love to know, real quick, real quick, I'd love to know who's watching the replay, who is on now, where are you located? I would love to know where you guys are located. Let's get going on that first. Hey, Sonia, glad you can make it. <laughs> yeah, tell us where you're located. I'm going to, I'm glad I could see the chat. Say hello, let us know you're on. I see we have a lot of viewers. Well, that's fantastic. All right, Laura, go ahead. I'll let you take away. <laughs> okay, so uh, how many viewers do we have right now live? We have, well, it was nine, it's at six, but you know, it jumps up and down all the time. Right. Okay, great. Well, today the topic we're gonna talk about that we have been talking about all week is about uh, the Burr Method, right? And uh, so let me give you a little bit of a story about the Burr Method and when I heard about the Burr Method the first time. So first of all, what is the Burr Method, right? The Burr Method is when you buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. So and let me break down every single component here in a minute. But first of all, let me explain to you how I ran into it. So this was actually at the end of the 80s. I was in Hawaii and I remember going to a seminar. Um, there was this guy, they were talking about 1031 exchanges, which is um, you know, a, a way to actually defer capital gains from real estate. So I went to the seminar and that, you know, he was talking about 1031, but that was a little bit ahead of my time uh, of what I wanted to do. But it really stuck to me, the Burr method, because he said the key to be successful as far as being a landlord and buying rental properties, you have to buy way below market. And the way you buy this below market, most of the times you have to buy properties that do need work. Because he says, if you buy property below market that they need work, then you have equity as soon as you fix up the property where you can refinance, pull money out, that can you invest into the next property. And he said, and also when you buy low enough, then you add income to your personal income, they will help you qualify. So it's kind of a vicious cycle, right? It's kind of a catch-22 because what the banks are doing are taking only 75% of your rental income on the property and you need to keep the expenses below the 75%. If you go over the 75%, then that little difference go against your personal income and you cannot grow the business. So he says, as long as you do this, you can grow your rental portfolio indefinitely. So that stuck to me, right? And honestly, back then it was not called the Burr Method as much as wholesaling wasn't even called wholesaling back then. It was called flipping the contract, right? But it's the same concept. And then a few years ago, I don't know who, I think bigger pockets I've heard the first time talking about the Burr Method. But anyway, so the concept is buy properties low enough so that when you fix them up, you build the value. So now you have enough room to refinance, get your money back out, still cash flow, plus keep below the 75% so that you can qualify for more mortgages. So I was like, huh, that's pretty clever. So, you know, there was this whole day class and it was talking about 1031, but that's what stuck to me. So fast forward a couple of years in 91, I came to the mainland and I remember this particular rule and I wanted to get into rentals, but I also knew I had to get rentals. Maybe they needed some work. Now, some of the rentals I got did not need the work or turnkey, you know, but the prices was good enough to make sense. But I always kept in mind the 75% below to keep for the expenses, to be on the safe side with lenders. So that's what I started to do. So the Burr method is you have to buy 
low enough so that you can rehab to increase the value of the property. So then you can rent to get the income so that you can refinance keeping below the 75% and then you repeat that. And if you keep that rolling, you exponentially grow. Now, the other key here component is how do you do that? How do you finance this particular thing? Well, first of all, you have to finance where you're using private money or hard money because no lender is going to loan you, no regular lender is gonna loan you on properties that need work. You know, there is a four or uh, I think it's 4% or 5% deferred rule maintenance, meaning that if the property need, needs more than 5% of its value, as far as rehab cost, regular lenders are not gonna rehab. So if you're buying a $200,000 property and it's gonna need $10,000 worth of work, it's fine. You know, maybe a, re a little bit of paint and carpeting, things like that. But if you not need to start, oh, I need to replace the roof and do major plumbing, then I wanna lend you on that. So how do you do that? Well, you have to use hard money, private money. They'll give you the money to rehab the property. Then now the property is worth more. And then you refinance using a smaller bank or credit union. That's the other thing. Larger banks, you know, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, they're going to cap how many properties you can have. And they fluctuate depending on what's going on in the, in the world, right? It was four properties, now it's 10 properties, but they will cap you. You cannot become independently wealthy and retire on rental income with 10 properties. Maybe you could, depending on how you live, but, you know, most of us won't. So how do you finance this property? You have to go to smaller banks and credit unions. Now, when you establish a relationship with these small regional banks or credit unions, first of all, they're known, uh, they're investors funded. They're not regulated by all the stipulations the government have. Yes, their funds are still ins insured and all that, but they basically build their own rules. So if they trust you and believe you as an investor, they're gonna keep loaning on it. You know, you can set up what they call these umbrella type loans where, you know, uh, all the all the mortgages go into this particular umbrella loan and all the income from the property go up, satisfy the mortgage and then what's left over can be dispersed into different accounts. So you can do a lot of clever things with these type of banks that you can do with regular banks. But that's the key to doing the Burr method. So to summarize this, buy low enough, rehab the property to increase the value, rent it out so you can get the income that will help you to qualify for the refinance loan. And you keep the income and the, the expenses, 75% of the rental income. And then you keep repeating the process indefinitely. So that's what the Burr method is. Now we do have a PDF that's going floating around the group. I was just in there. It's I think three posts down. Look for the image of the PDF so that you have this explained in more detail as well. Um, you can request that PDF and we will get that to you. So now what we are gonna do is we are gonna open for an Ask Us Anything. I love how many of you are on. Thank you for attending. Um, we're gonna open for an Ask Us Anything. These happen every week at 11 a.m. Eastern after the main live. You are allowed to ask one question per, um, per thing. So one question per live. We do this to be fair. We do have paying students. So this is something we offered to give you guys the option to have like this burning question and desire. And we want to make sure that you are getting the right information. There's so much bad information circling out there. So we give you this option once a week and then obviously you can post throughout the group and get other people's opinions. So what I'm going to do is you have one question. So I'm going to make this little line into the the comments, and as soon as you see that line, go ahead and post your question. While I wait for those questions to come in, um, Laura, do you want to talk about the upcoming webinar while I get the raffle pulled up? Sure. So we have a webinar coming up next week. It's called the Ultimate uh, Virtual Real Estate Investing Method. And this actually is going to be brand new information because I am actually, Liz doesn't even know this, but I'm in the process of redoing that webinar because, you know, honestly, guys, I get bored myself talking about the same thing. Okay. There is so much information that I have up here about real estate <laughs> that, you know, I want to get it out there in bits and chunks, not to overwhelm you, but I also want to make it 
that's more fun for everybody. So the ultimate webinar is going to be next week. Elizabeth is going to post here the, the date, the time, and the link. I'll just show up. And <laughs> then you can go and sign up. It's free. Okay, it's free. Uh, what is the catch? Nothing. I just want to share a lot of information. And at the end of the webinar, if you want to see what it would be to work with us, we're going to present that and then you can talk to us. We're not going to sell you anything on the webinar, so don't worry. There's a ton of good information. And then at the end, I will also, we will help you by doing uh, actually an assessment to see where you are uh, with the business, depending if you're interested in buying whole. Now, this webinar covers everything. It does not cover just wholesaling. I want to make that clear. I do also get into buying hold and fix and flips. So some of the little bit of knowledge I share with you today, I'm going to give you a lot a lot of our golden nuggets during the webinar. And I'm also going to uh, share with you how to analyze a little bit deals for buy and hold to make sure they're viable. Same thing for the fix and flip and wholesaling. And the other thing we're going to talk about the webinar is how to put this on a virtual system, on a virtual automated pilot, because with rentals, you can also actually, you probably better doing this virtual because now you can live anywhere. You can live, you know, Miami, Florida, like where we are, but do rentals in another state where it makes more sense, where your cash flow per door is four or $500 instead of just breaking even like here in Miami right now, if you're lucky. So with that said, we're going to talk about that. Now, we're, we're going to talk about long-term rentals. We're not going to get into short-term. However, I just wanted you to know we do have training on short-term rentals, Airbnb. Actually, one of our past students, well, she's still with us as a coach now. She owns over 50 Airbnbs, okay? And she just accumulated those in just a couple of years. So she's actually uh, pulled her in to coach with us. And she's a younger millennial, Elizabeth Sage, but she's very successful. So if any of you are interested in Airbnb, do come to the webinar and then you can talk to us about getting information and get trained by Dawn, who trains only on Airbnb. Now, she's not a coach out there, so you can't find her anywhere because she's an investor. I just ask her, hey, you have a ton of knowledge. You're doing amazing. Why don't you? teach and our students also, how you did one it. Of our, one of our students went through her live training when she was recording it for the students. We offer them to access it live so they can listen to the recording and not have to wait. And she has done six rentals since that training. And this was this training was in April when she did the training. It was six rentals or May, but it was six rentals. And I think three of them she flipped and turned into short-term rentals. And she says all of her success came because of Dawn's training. Yeah. And uh, so she's our very own. She went through our training initially. So, you know, she knows exactly how we, uh, our, you know, how we build a business, our belief system and the process. She just took it to an all different level and also added the short-term rentals. Yeah. So uh, stay tuned for that. And like I said, in the webinar, we're going to touch on a lot of things, including Airbnbs. And I know a lot of interest out there of you guys, or why not? You can make three or four times the regular rent by doing an Airbnbs in the right locations, right? So it's really an up and coming strategy. Um, so Liz, do you have anything else you want to cover? No, I just want to share. This is our raffle prize for today, guys. Look how cute and cozy that is. We are changing up our raffles a bit. We were getting kind of bored. And we wanted to <laughs> like, like with the webinar, we get bored, right? <laughs> we get bored. So we change them up. We'll just literally throw you guys through a loop in the group. How you enter for these raffles. Let's be really clear about this. This is for, it is not who comments the most. It is you get an entry per comment. So the more you comment, the better your odds are to win. And what we do is I have an assistant that combs through the group every week. And she enters how many times you've done it, puts you in this like spinning wheel and she just lets it spin. And then that is how you get entered. So what we do is it's not any specific post. It's every post, commenting, liking, all kinds of stuff, your interaction. Now comments are the ones that count though. Um, but if you like, it will show up more on your feed to read on to remember to go back in. And then on Thursdays, we do these live raffles. And this is just to make this group fun. We wanted to make this a community. I've been building this group for almost three years now. And I wanted to make this a fun community where you get the right information. You're learning from some of the best mentors. And I say that humbly 
just up, just from what I know of other mentors out there. And you're just having fun. That's what this group is for, to make real estate and learning and all that exciting for you. So every Thursday, we are going to have different raffles going out. We um, are going to start letting you know what the raffles are the during the week, but this is the raffle for today. So my assistant sent over the name, and this is what you're going to win. What you would need to do is when you win, um, is email in questions at realestateinvestingwomen.com with your address, obviously your name and your phone number, and we will get this to you. There is no obligation, nothing like that, that you have to do. There's no price range. So who's super excited for this raffle? Who wants to win it? Say me, 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 because that would be, you know, that's who it is, right? Like say, I'm, I want to win. So definitely start commenting. I'm going to pull it up. Rock. So can I put my name in it too? Well, here's the issue. We were looking at different raffles and I ended up ordering like two boxes because I want to <laughs> myself. Right? Yeah, Liz said, I, went, I had ordered this morning. How many boxes did you order of different things? Two, two so <laughs> far, but I had to stop looking at the links that I was getting because it was, it was getting me in trouble. So <laughs> like, I'm going to end up owning all of these boxes for myself. So well, it's not. like having Christmas year round, you know, I love getting boxes like this because it's like, I forget. And then it's like, oh my God. Yes. I, I love that. Exactly. So our raffle winner today of this box is Ashley Grants. So Ashley Grants can thank you so much for taking the time to interact with us this week. Congratulations. All you have to do is email in questions at realestateinvestingwomen.com and you, we will send this to you with your address. We need your address, your phone number, and obviously like your full name that you want it sent to and all of that. So congratulations. Right now? I do not know. I don't have okay. comment, but that's okay. We do not require you to be live, although being live is always more exciting when we announce the winner. Um, okay. So you ready for questions? I'll read you answer. But they would have to listen to the replay in order to know, right? Yes, they would have to listen to the replay. So that's another thing is you'd have to go back and listen. So if you missed them, there have been times there have been raffles unclaimed um, because no one came in and claimed it. So that is the other kind of catch, right? You have to come back and listen to the live to see if you won. All right, ready for questions? Yep. All right, Nikki's asking if you could start all over what would be your first real estate purchase price range? And would you do Burr? Um, all over as far as an investor, I guess. Um, I am honestly very glad how I started with my first rental property. The first rental I bought, and I re remember the address to this day. And if you are in St. Louis, you can look it up. It was 38. 33 Marine, M A R I N E, and was in St. Louis. It was a two family property, two family building, and it was rented out Section 8. However, it was foreclosed, and they, it was a small bank that owned it in St. Louis. And they were able to, they let me over, take over the loan. I just had to put 10% down, which was only $3,000 because the building itself was only $30,000. But that's the first building I bought, and I had an intense, instant cash flow net of about $800 a month from the two units. So it was really a good purchase. Now, what happened with this purchase, I, after a couple of years, I refinanced it. I did some work to it. I increased the rents, and I refinanced, and I pulled out I mean, $20,000 on top of uh, paying off the bank. And so then I used that money for other things, but yeah, that was my first one. So my thing is this, I like personally smaller multifamily. I started with a two family, then I bought some single family. Then I bought a six unit building in University City near St. Louis. I bought an eight unit building, which I kicked myself to this day for selling that one that was in Central West End. Uh, on McPherson, again, if you're in St. Louis, which is an up and coming, has been an up and coming area with a lot of cafes. And I did sell that one a long time ago. But I, uh, of all the buildings, I think the two units, duplexes are my favorite because the thing is this, with four units or more, you tend to have more of a turnover. People tend to stay in more temporarily, one, two years, where on two units, they tend to stay there longer. The maintenance has been better. The cash flow per door has been better. 
So that was my first purchase actually was my idea one. And then I did other things, but I will stick with that. All right. Um, Audrey asking if you need special financing, who might do that? Uh, we do have uh, lenders, right, that we can refer out. Yeah, if you email questions at realestateinvestingwomen.com, we can get you and ask for the list of lenders. We can get that for you. And these now, this list is not long. And the reason being is these are lenders that we have personally worked with or like Dawn has worked with or a student has worked with. They've been vetted. They have been proven. They have performed and they weren't outrageously priced or anything to where it just was ridiculous that we would never recommend them. So that's why it's a shorter list. It's not this random list that anyone could get on because I know people email us and all the time asking if they could be added to our list. No, because we have to use you or someone we know has to use you. This is by pure referral. All we ask is that you say we sent you. We don't get anything for it. Just say that we sent you. Real Estate Investing Women sent you. That way they know that we are sending people to them. Um, I'm looking for advice for Airbnb and where to go for a lender who knows that area. Oh, well, that would be that list. Um, <laughs> let's see. If you refinance to pull your initial investment out, does that leave any cash flow per month? Well, that's why you have to buy low enough, right? And now when you do your refis, just be careful. You know, and sometimes you might be able to pull out more money. However, make sure that you need leave enough meat on the bone for you to cash flow. You know, you should always cash flow on any property. Um, um, I, there is another coach out there that he says that, oh no, you know, look, buy for appreciation, not for cash flow. Oh, well, yeah, okay. We've seen how that happened in 2007, right? We took us about 10 years to recoup from that downfall. So no, buy for cash flow today. You should have at least my rule of thumb, you should have at least $250 net per door. Meaning if it's a duplex, you have five, $600 net after all expenses, including vacancy rates uh, of 10%, you know, take away maybe one month a year is vacant. Um, you should cash for 250 per door. That's my rule of thumb. And we're going to cover a little more during the webinar next week. Yep. Um, Don's asking with rising interest rates and as a new investor, should I focus on short-term rentals or multifamily? My philosophy is this, always buy, even if you plan to do a short-term rental, always buy where the numbers make sense as a long-term. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if your cash flow is a long-term, you're going to do amazing as a short-term. My concern is when you go into short-term rentals, Airbnb, VRBO, all of them, they are very much tied to local rules and regulations. So, so what if as a condo association changes, the HOA or the city and county, they decide they don't want to allow rentals and uh, short-term rentals, right? So then you're stuck with no cash flow. So buy always taking the long-term cash flow in consideration and then you can do short-term. Worst case scenario, you can always go back to long-term. Great. And last question I'm seeing, because we do one per person every week, is Sonia. Um, am I understanding this correctly, that for the Burr method is for getting into that cycle and not getting stuck in after your initial investments? We still need to figure out hard money lenders, private money lenders, or building a relationship with a good credit union, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. Now you can use seed money to start. So for example, I have some of my students, they got a, a, a home equity line, a HELOC on their house, right? So I'm, I'm thinking of these particular couple of uh, students, I'm not going to say the names, but they actually got the $60,000 home equity line on their house. And they were able to use the $60,000 as seed money to buy the first two rentals because they needed a down payment and then they used, I think one of them was uh, um, our money lender and the other one was owner financing. Um, now they did that, fixed up the properties and then six months later they refinanced, pulled their seed money out, a little bit of cash and now they're investing to two more properties. They did that for two years. Um, they accumulated portfolio of over 10 rentals just doing it this way. Now uh, they've been in the business in real estate about three to four years. Um, they actually then used wholesaling after the first year, they started using wholesaling 
um, as a way to pay off the mortgages. So now they've been four years in the business as of the end of this year, they will have all their rentals paid off and they use their whole selling money to pay off all the rentals. Needless to say, they also quit their job six months into the business. They do real estate full time. They don't even work corporate anymore because their income from real estate now between the wholesale and the rentals um, paid off. Now, they did start to buy and hold. They didn't start with wholesaling. They actually did buy and hold. They didn't want to do wholesaling. But then they say, wait a minute, if we can use our wholesaling, pay off the rentals, then in four years, we're going to have all this rental income coming in every month free and clear with no mortgages. And that's what they're doing. They're going to, they told me by the end of this year, they owe another $30,000 in one of the rentals and then paid off completely. Yeah, they said they were like, I was very, very against wholesaling, but Liz convinced us. <laughs> yeah, and they say now they owe free and clear rentals and they just started back 2018. So it's, yeah, yeah it's not like they started a long time ago. All right, we did have one more question come in while you were talking from Jennifer. I've come across an RV lot for sale. It has a couple lots where tenants bring their own RV. It has a couple container homes, a couple tiny homes, and a 10-wheel RV to rent. How do you figure comps on something like this? I love RV lots and mobile homes. I'm not a specialist in that, so I cannot tell you exactly how to do that. It's not my field. Um, however, it is a really good feel to do that. Now, the same couple I told you that paid off their rentals actually also got the mobile home RV lots and bought RVs. Um, they would know that. <laughs> so, you know, uh, if you ever become one of our students, uh, then I can let, get in touch with them and they can help you figure that stuff out because that's one of the routes that they took as well. They bought an RV. Uh, yeah, that sounds really cool, though. Like I was talking to Laura that that would be something really fun to have in the future, just because that is getting that is getting so, so like nice. Yeah, it's a really I have an RV and we travel uh, all over the country. And I can tell you right now, if, uh, you know, I was younger and I wanted to start a new venture again, I would buy a lot and develop as an RV. Actually, the student we have the Airbnb. Uh, that she owns over 50 yeah. Airbnbs. She bought a um, a motel with uh, on a lake with land, and I told her, I said, develop that as an RV campground. I tell you right now, in that location on the lake, when it has a, a a bait store already there, it has a motel. I said that would be booming. And, you know, and, and it's easy. You just have to basically get zoned and put some, uh, you know, hookups there and you're in business. You don't, you, know, you have the land, you know, you don't have to evict or build anything or nothing, you know, just maybe some facility like restrooms. That's it. Awesome. All right. So I don't see any more questions. So we are going to jump off. We hope to see you on that webinar next week, it's going to be phenomenal, really good information. Apparently, Laura's going to change it all up again, but that's fine. I'm great at winging it. And um, we will talk to you guys throughout the week in the group. Um, definitely tell us what you thought of this webinar. What did you, or webinar? Well, it kind of is. It's like a mini webinar. Uh, what you thought of this live. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to post them into the chat as well as throughout the group. We do monitor it from time to time, but this one's more for everyone to help each other out. It's a community. So definitely do that. And congratulations again on the raffle winner and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And, and I want to mention one last thing for anybody. We are going to be in New York on November 12th. So anybody here that's from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, we have people actually that are coming. We had some women from Pennsylvania and Virginia that are coming to this event in New York, okay? So we're gonna be there live uh, on November 12th. And uh, Elizabeth can post the details or the link for that as well. And uh, come and see us, come and hang out with us for a few hours. We're gonna do a lot of, we're gonna do training. Uh, we're going to give you takeaway manuals. We're going to give you a lot of prizes there too. So just join us and breakfast and it's gonna be fun. Yes, and it also is all over the group. So. If you're listening to this and you cannot see the chat for any reason, you can PM me for the New York link, but it's also posted all throughout the group. Uh, we've been doing lots of promos on it because we really want to just make this super fun for everybody as well. So I will put it in. We want to go back to New York. So this has to be successful. <laughs> it has to be successful because right now we're, you know, we've we restarted doing cities um, and we're we're kind of testing the ones we used to go to. But if they aren't 
successful, then we will add in new cities and take out old and all of that. So um, I'm going to post it here as well. It will be in the comments. Great. And if you want us to come to your city, comment below where you're located or near major cities you are, and we can look into it. All right, everybody have a wonderful day. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.